do. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Missoula Art Museum's the Virtual Art in the Moment, an art program for those experiencing dementia and their caregivers. This is a recorded segment, so you're welcome to watch this at your own convenience at another time. My name is Kay grissom Kiley, and I'm the Curator of Education at the Missoula Art Museum. And I'm here today with my fabulous colleague, Bev Flukert, who's a professional artist and um, also a professional teaching artist. And we're gonna be leading today uh, this segment. And I also wanna introduce Jenny Bevel. She is another colleague of ours and she is recording this segment, so you might hear her voice. Hi, Jenny. Hi, everybody. So we're standing here in the Linda M. Frost Contemporary American Indian Art Gallery. And this is a gallery dedicated to always honoring and exhibiting contemporary art made by American Indian artists. Um, this exhibition that we're standing in is called Love Letters to the Collection. So I'm gonna pick up the, the um, camera and I'm going to show you a little bit about Love Letters to the Collection. So here we go. I'm just going to let you all see kind of a perspective shot, a long perspective shot of the entire exhibition. Okay, and I'm going to take you around the other way. All right. So we're very excited to have you with us today. During the next hour, we are gonna focus on a few things. And right now I'm gonna just hone in on one piece here and I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about what we're gonna do today. Okay. All right, during the next hour, we're going to share a little bit about Love Letters to the Collection exhibition as a whole. Then Bev and I are gonna show you and focus on one particular piece of artwork by Lillian Pitt. Um, we're not there yet. Um, and then we're going to read a love letter written to Lillian Pitt's piece. And then you're going to get to write a love letter of your own. So please have your paper and pencil ready. And during all of our education and public programs, MAM reads aloud its acknowledgement statement, which was written in conjunction with tribal leaders. MAM sits on the ancestral territories of the Salish and Ponderay peoples, and we respect the indigenous stewards of this land. MAM acknowledges their rich cultures as fundamental to artistic life in Montana and to the work of MAM. What is this exhibition, Love Letters to the Collection? The exhibition is filled with artworks from MAM's Contemporary American Indian Art Collection, selected by guest selectors. The exhibit will grow each week for the next seven months as different selectors such as artists, writers, poets, community members, local and tribal leaders, activists, scholars, students, and others select new works to add to the installation and share their thoughts about artworks in a love letter. Love Letters to the Collection amplifies diverse voices and honors the richness of, indig of indigenous cultures. The exhibition takes an active approach. It activates the contemporary art, contemporary in American Indian art collection by involving the viewer in the selection process. Then love letters are written to help stimulate and share previously unheard stories that make up the living narrative of art history. All of these love letters, including the love letter you might write a little later in this segment today, will go into the permanent records of the Contemporary American Indian Art Collection. So that's pretty exciting um, that we get to take the perspectives of so many different people, so many different backgrounds, 
the perspectives about the American Indian Art Collection here at MAM and incorporate them into the permanent records of the collection. And in the words of celebrated Salish Kootenai artist, Corwin Claremont, whom we also know as Corky Claremont, the real Indians did not die out sometime in the 1850s. By exhibiting contemporary Indian art, you have to recognize that Indians are alive and active participants in life today. Um, okay. I'm just going to jump in. We lost the visual. Okay. I'm not sure why. Maybe something got pressed accidentally. Okay. There you go. We're back. Okay. Um, we're now going to look at the artwork by artist Lillian Pitt, who is Wasco, Yakima, and Warm Springs. And this piece is called Gorge Spirits Floating Number Two. And Jenny, can you see the image? I can okay. see it, Kay, but I can also share my screen and show a little more um, closer um, version of this work it, while Bev okay. reads her questions. Would that be a good time to do that? Sure, that'd be great. Great, okay, so I will do that right now. Um, and in a little, you're seeing Lillian Pit herself right there in a moment, we'll be actually hearing from Lillian. Okay. Um, for now, here is that image a little bit bigger so that you can look at the details while Bev is talking. Great. So once again, the title of this piece by artist Lillian Pitt is Gorge Spirits Floating. And as we look at the piece, there are several ways for you to interact with it today. So if you have someone with you, you can turn to that person to make a comment or ask a question. You can write comments down on your piece of paper, your thoughts or comments. You can also make a sketch or a drawing on a piece of paper. And remember, this is a recorded segment, so you can watch it as many times as you'd like. So in looking at Lillian's piece, what do you notice or wonder about this artwork? What is the first thing about this piece that catches your eye? What do the symbols and figures that Lillian Pitt uses look like? Do they remind you of anything? Notice the colors and the textures of the print's background. What do these colors and textures make you think of? And can you think of your own narrative or your own story? for the figures? All right, to go a little deeper, we'd like to share a video of Lillian Pitt speaking about her art. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen again, and now we're gonna hear from an uh, interview that Kay did with Lillian. I did that. Uh, I live in Portland, but was born in Warm Springs, Oregon. It's the Confederated Tribes of Warm Springs, Wasco, and Yakima Indians. And that my ancestors came from the Columbia River Gorge. And um, I'm uh, a mixed media artist, and I started out in clay because I love clay and whatever I could do with clay that would make things better, you know, as in, in glass or, or in bronze. And it, so it gives me more items to 
play with. When did you really start loving art? I've always loved art. My dad was an artist, not really an artist, but he loved drawing, singing, and he was a musician. And, and uh, my mom did beautiful beadwork and everyone around me did beautiful baskets and beadwork. And, and so it was always there for me to appreciate. How many years have you been painting and making art? I haven't been painting so much as, as, as glazing, which is, is using a brush to put the color on for the record pieces, which there's none here, I'm sorry. Um, it's been about 30, 40 years. I'm a late starter and um, I never considered myself artistic until I touched clay and uh, I was 35 at the time, and so just really a late bloomer and uh, been loving it since. Was there an event that took place that inspired you to learn about your ancestors that you incorporate into your art? Yes, um, when I started making the clay, I, um, kept seeing this image um, and, uh, and <clears throat> I kind of, I didn't know anything about her. And then I thought, well, I did uh, a Yupik mask. I did a Northwest Coast mask and, and I did uh, an African mask. And, and so I did all these things that weren't really mine. And I thought I better really find out who I am. And so then I went to, to the reservation and talked to my elders and they told me all about our people. And so and I said, well, what do you think about me doing the work of, of all these beautiful things that I see at the gorge? And she said that, they both said, that's great because you're letting people know we're still here. We were not vanished and uh, we're still creating and you're bringing, you're bringing knowledge to people, so. Okay, would that be a good place for us to pause with the video? That'd be great, Jenny, thanks. Yeah, and just to let everybody know that we will put the link to this video in the description so that anyone who would like to watch the full eight minute interview with Lillian can, can watch that. Thank you. So we're back to the view of Lillian's piece on the wall in the Frost Gallery now. Okay. Now I'd like to give you an example of a love letter by reading a love letter written by Martin Leibinger. And this letter is written to Lillian Pitt's piece, Gorge Spirits Floating Number Two. Dear Beloved Blue, so far I only saw you on a photograph Thus, I can just imagine the extent of your real life beauty and your true colors. However, what I could see is the relation among those colors, which impressed me at first sight. I especially like the simplicity in their variations and the harmony and tension that your gentle red tone creates in contrast to both your cold and your warm blue. It is especially this relation of colors that makes your floating spirits appear on different layers as, as if they would be able to shift from background to foreground, like from past to present. I learned about where you came from when I had a chance to talk to Lillian Pitt, who created you. I met Lillian this year through studies at the University of Montana. It was a true pleasure to talk to her and I was fascinated about what she had to say. I learned that you tell stories from a very long time ago. They descend from rock carvings and paintings that reach back almost 12,000 years. They tell the history of Watlala, Wisham, and Wasco, the people who lived in the Columbia River Gorge before they were forced onto reservations. Thus, I deeply admire how you honor and honor the memory of Lillian's ancestors in such a kind and pleasant way and keep their stories alive. 
And yet at the same time, you appear to me very much to be from here and now. I even have the impression that I could look at you, look at you with questions that I have in mind and you could give me an answer. Thus, I am very cheerful that you will have your first exhibition here at MAM and I have the chance to meet you, meet you live and experience your true colors. Yours sincerely, Martin. So Martin Leibinger is um, a visiting student from the University of Montana who lives um, and is from Germany. And in Germany, he ran um, se several contemporary art spaces. All right. We hope that you enjoy the love letter from Martin. And now you get to write your very own love letter with your own thoughts to one uh, of these artworks, which is going to be the Lillian Pitt piece that we've been looking at. So hopefully you have your paper and your pencil ready. And remember, you can write a note, a letter, or even draw or sketch your letter. Okay, and can we, Kay, can we show some of the letters that sure. have been, so we were mentioning earlier, everybody, that the uh, viewers who've been coming into the gallery in the past many weeks have been um, using some of the cards here at the MAM or just paper that they have in their sketchbooks, whatever, to write their own love letters and they will be added to the collection. And the ones that you're seeing now um, are just examples of um, some things that have been written so far. Um, let's look at one particularly. And this letter, um, or a card, um, actually on this side says, hear me out. And the person wrote, I love you because you are part of everything. I am not Native American. This changes nothing. And her name is Anne. And that's just one of many of all of the cards. Many people have made drawings, self-portraits, and we're very excited to see uh, what kinds of love letters or drawings that you come up with in response to Lillian's piece. Um, that so, they, should we mention that if they write a love letter, they could mail it to ma'am or email it um, to the artwork directly? Yes, please. <clears throat> that would be great. I think at the bottom, and I'll put it in the description of the video too, each artwork has its own, very own email address. So if you wanted to dictate your letter to someone or type it into an email yourself, you could email Lillian's artwork. And I think it might be at the bottom of that description right there, Kay. Yes, I'm going to recite the email to you. And if you're with someone or want to do it yourself, um, you can email your love letter to Gorge Spirits at MissoulaArtMuseum.org. So it's G O R G E, Gorge Spirits, S P I R I T S, at MissoulaArtMuseum.org. And then, ma'am, we'll have your love letter that'll be go as part of the permanent collection. Um, in regards to William Pitt's piece. So thank you. And Bev's going to talk to you and guide you through writing a love letter. So hopefully everyone has something to write with and some paper of some sort. It doesn't really matter what kind of paper you have or if it's a card. And um, you might want to start off with uh, something like Dear Artwork, um, and in this case, it's called um, Gorge Spirits Floating, um, or Dear Artist, or Dear Lillian. 
and you might say something like, um, through my eyes, you are blank, whatever you, whatever you are seeing when you are experiencing the peace. Or something like, when I first saw you or looked at you, this work of art, I thought of blank. Or from my point of view, I see blank. Or the first, the thing that first connected me to your work was, is there something about this piece of work that just jumped out at you right away or that spoke to you in some way that you want to let this artist know? And it will be different for every person. Everyone watching will have a different response to looking at Lillian's work. And one last guiding thought would be something like um, about your own experience. My experience or my own history or my own place in the world makes me see blank when I look at you. So everyone can just kind of take their time responding to Lillian's art and what this piece means to you. And we will look forward to being able to look at and read some of your thoughts and responses. And once again, if you press pause, um, you can continue to see Lillian's um, art and to work on your love letter. But our time here has unfortunately come to an end. All right. Well, thank you for <clears throat> excuse me. Thank you for joining us today. Um, we hope you all turn in, tune in to Ma'am's upcoming Art in the Moment on the first Monday of November and the first Monday of December at two o'clock. And please remember that the Missoula Art Museum is open to the public. Masks are required. And as you see, we are not wearing masks during this video because it's really important to us that you all are able to see our mouths um, to hear us better. So when you do come to MAM, we hope you will come and we're open from 10 to five. We do require the masks and um, we hope that you can see this a lovely exhibition and Lillian Pitt's piece in person. And we are free of charge here at the Missoula Art Museum. So I also just wanted to say thank you to the Montana Geriatric Education Center for sponsoring Art in the Moment and the continued support of Dementia Friendly Missoula and the Missoula Aging Services. Thank you and hope to see you at MAM. Bye. We look forward to seeing everyone. Bye, you guys.